Guys and dolls, cats and chicks, you're listening to Viva ENT, Rock, Pop, and Soul. I'm Devin, the video dude. Hey, hey video dude. dudes, what you filming? Um, at the high dive tonight. Right on, rock and roll. And I'm here in the studio with Darren. You want to say hi to Seattle? Hello. <laughs> it is the do train. <laughs> Thanks for letting me on, guys. And of course, the greatest producer, the west side of the Rockies, but they just keep on going around the go- globe. It's perpetually west, so. <laughs> hey, it's Eric. CC Rider. All right. And Happy New Year to all our listeners out there. Yeah. Um, It's been a great start to the year so far with uh, the Tractor Tavern last night with uh, Planets in the Ocean, Royal Blunder, the Pop Cycles. I'm stoked for tonight. The High Dive, uh, Signal Flags is playing with Shark Legs. Um, Alternatively, uh, if you're at the North Star Diner, Matt Glock in the Keys and Horse Fight and uh, Honeymoon Tree are playing. But we just went to one of the biggest shows of the year on the on the last day of the year and saw Heart. <laughs> That's right. With Jason Bonham opening. Yes. Incredible show. Incredible show. And it, was this your first time seeing Heart? No. This was not my first time. This was my third time seeing Heart. I saw them once uh, first in 87, 1987 on the Bad Animals tour. And then in 1992, they did a... Thing that summer at the Gorge called Rock and the Environment, which had eight bands that day. Hart was the headlining band. The second band was Queensryche, um, and there are videos out there of them doing um, a Rolling Stones cover, if you look online. And you got the uh, an artifact from the concert here in the studio. Yeah, that's right. I brought in a little artifact. Of course, you on the radio cannot see, but... If you watch the video later, you can see I bought a tour guide at the 1987 Bad Animals Tour. I still have the bag that it came in. Um, the tour is sponsored by Westwood One and Sun Country Coolers. Um, and then, yep, the, uh, the surviving tour guide from the show with great pictures and information of the band and all kinds of stuff. So It's in great condition. Yep, yep. Still in good condition. I keep good care of all these things. Anyway, but... Great show. Tom Kimmel opened for him. This was down in uh, Concord, California when I was at college. Um, just bought a one-off random ticket um, and took the BART train and the bus and stuff up to the Concord Pavilion from school. But real fun show. Yeah. And then uh, I saw him in 92, as I said. And, uh, and I have also seen The Love Mongers. And my connection to heart is I took a couple songwriting classes at Shoreline Community College with Sue Ennis who was uh, one of the... Uh, uh, it was evolved, in the Love Mongers. In, yeah, it was from Evolved. So. Um, and I've made a lot of connections through that songwriting class uh, like with all the bands I'm seeing today. Yeah. Eric, have you ever seen Heart? Are you a fan? I, I do like them. I, I've only seen them on TV, i got to say. I, I've never seen them live in person. Uh, but they are, you know, Seattle legends. So, yeah. um, you know, more than anything, uh, that uh, makes me respect them. E- even during the 80s when some of their stuff, I got to admit, really wasn't for me when they went really slick pop. Um, yeah, I, I, I got to say I like more of the 70s stuff like Barracuda, uh, stuff like that I, I think is really cool. Um, but, you know, they've always done interesting stuff. They've always done uh, what they wanted to, and they've always been an influential uh, band, especially in these parts. Sure. Yeah, they filled out that arena. It was like the, the line to get in was to the fountain, and then getting out with the Space Needle fireworks, it, it took us uh, like hours to 
escape from Seattle Center. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's, you know, fantastic that they can still do that because they, as far as I know, they haven't really been putting out records for a while. They um, got new content. They got new songs. Uh, uh, they I played a new one, actually, uh, at the show, uh, Roll the Dice. But they've, they've been on the outs but, for a little while. Yeah, the last album was 2016. Yeah. Um, they've been on hiatus. They, they say. Yeah, exactly. So the the fact that uh, the fans stick with them sure. is, is pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. well, it, they've got such great content, as you said. Um, and, you know, even um, as you said with the older stuff, Eric, and then as uh, Devin, you were saying with the newer stuff, they have been continuing to keep their fan base growing and going. So, you know, good for them. And um you know, selling out the concert the other night, incredible. And uh, I was surprised the, about the Led Zeppelin connection. I knew about Jason Bonham, the Led Zeppelin experience, opening up for Hart, but I didn't know Hart was going to play some Led Zeppelin songs as well. That was a treat. It yeah. makes sense. It makes sense. I, I would think that uh, Led Zeppelin probably would have been an influence on Hart, especially in those early days. I, there, it, it's possible that Jimmy Page had some help in discovering the band um, back. There are rumors about that. Um, but um, they have been known to play Led Zeppelin songs for a long time. As a matter of fact, when I was at that show in 87, um, that was not too long after the live um, Greatest Hits Live CD had come out. And, of course, that one ends the CD with Rock and Roll by Led Zeppelin. Um, and so it was funny. I was uh, sitting next to a guy and I told him, you know, I bet you 20 bucks to a dollar. They're going to encore with rock and roll tonight. And he was like, what? With Led Zeppelin rock and roll? I was like, yeah, you watch. And sure enough, they did. <laughs> and they played the, the Battle of Evermore uh, when, uh, at our show. Uh, yeah. And that was one that was influenced by the Love Mongers. That one came in when they did that. And and the Love Mongers, for folks that don't know, is the side project of Anne and Nancy Wilson, who are sisters, of course, main songwriters for Heart, and they've been the only constants in the lineup since 1973. Yep, yep. But Sue Ennis has been a friend of theirs since way, way back in the day, since they were going to school. And um, she helped write some little stuff um, for Heart, and then um, with the Love Mongers, um, and uh, some of the songs that the Love Mongers did were actually about their younger days when they were in school together and stuff. Yeah, she joked in the class, like, I didn't write Barracuda, otherwise I wouldn't be teaching this class. But <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, she, she actually, uh, she, I think she's still out there teaching, if I'm not. Uh, sure. Yeah. I called her once uh, on the phone when I was working for the Fifth Avenue Theater because she was a patron at the Fifth and she lives around the Golden Gardens area, but talked to her for about 15 seconds. She was nice, but had to run. And Hart is local, and I, I just moved up to Kenmore. They played a lot in Bothell and at, like Shorecrest High School, like just down the, the street. So uh, very, very local legends. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, they started in Seattle, uh, lived in Vancouver, uh, were a local band in Vancouver for a while. Yep. Um, but ultimately, when one of them was dodging the draft. Yeah. <laughs> ultimately relocated back to Seattle and, uh, you know, it took off a smash success. I mean, 1973, uh, their first single, um, Actually, 1975, I should say, their first single, How Deep It Goes, didn't really go anywhere. Um, but it was soon after that they saw a ton of success uh, with the follow up single. And if I can get this to play. In the quiet afternoon, you left and went down into town, and I just watched. Now, this is the first single, How Deep It Goes, from 1975. Where the fog lies kissing the mountainside you want to Much more of the folk influence in this one. Absolutely, yeah. When they started off, they really blended folk and hard rock in a way that not too many other bands were doing. Yeah. And at this time, it featured Roger Fisher on guitar and Steve Fawson on bass guitar. Oh, 
And he was from uh, uh, Army originally. The, the well, Army. yeah, the Army formed in 1967. Same year as something else. Yeah, yeah. So there is a... a and a, Hocus Pocus, who probably saw the most success of, of those artists, I would think. Well, there was an interesting story about the Army. Um, so there is a picture that just circulated by Roger Fisher and Steve Fawson, the two original members, um, that was them sitting on a couch together, and they claimed that this picture was taken on the night that the army which became heart was formed and it was october 17th 1967 which is the day after i was born so the band heart in essence is one day younger than me wow <laughs> there's yeah. waiting for your heartbeat <laughs> <laughs> but the day after i was like i and i hadn't seen that picture or didn't know that fact about that until probably like a month ago when I saw it on Facebook. And I was like, oh, wow. It's the day after I was born. What a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so this is their 50th year. Uh, yeah. 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 We're waiting for the big 50th anniversary thing to happen, hopefully. Very cool. Well, so how deep it goes, it didn't go that deep <laughs> on the <laughs> charts. Uh, but the next single was magic for them. In fact, Magic Man. No pun intended. <laughs> Pun very much intended. <laughs> uh, went all the way to number nine in the Billboard Hot 100. Yeah. And this is an absolute classic. And oh, yeah. when when you hear how deep it goes, it, it is surprising to think that Magic Man or Crazy on You or Dreamboat Annie weren't the first single. But maybe, you know, the idea is just to get your name out there and then people go, when the second single arrives, goes, oh, okay, I've, I've heard of these guys before. Maybe I'll give this a listen. Sure. This run of singles with Magic Man reaching number nine, Crazy on You in 76, following it up, reaching number 35, and Dreamboat Annie reaching 42 in 76, really set forth their career, set it in motion, and started them on a pathway to the, the point where they are now, 50 years later, yeah. and still packing arenas. And mm -hmm. these three songs in a row here are probably still... Uh, three of their most popular songs, despite Em and Re released so many over the years. It definitely contributed to their 50 million uh, record sales worldwide. And uh, they've been nominated for four Grammy Awards. And, and this is all from the uh, debut album, Dreamboat Annie, by the way. Mm -hmm. and what a dream. Uh, are these mm -hmm. dreams on that album? No. That's that's later. That's these more in the 80s. on the yeah. 85 album, Heart. Or that folk influence on the beginning of Crazy yeah. on You. Yes, it's a great guitar. Absolutely.
And of course, that's Ann Wilson on lead vocals. And of course, her sister, uh, Nancy Wilson, on rhythm guitar and vocals. <laughs> Who was married to Cameron Crowe for a while. That's right. So terrific, terrific musicianship that, uh, you know, crossed a lot of boundaries. I think people that were into hard rock, people that were into folk, people that were into alternative music, proto-punk and punk, all kind of agreed on heart. And it didn't hurt that they were a great songwriters and great musicians, but also fronted by two very attractive women. Yes. You know? Absolutely. In the 70s, I mean, and, and even more which, than now, that was important, I and think. I'm glad you yeah. segued that to what I really wanted to also throw in. If you watch the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High, mm-hmm. Nancy Wilson is the girl in the Corvette convertible at the stoplight with Judge Reinhold when he pitches his uniform from the... Uh, fish place <laughs> and uh, as she laughs at him and uh, makes fun of him <laughs> but that was because she was going out with Cameron Crowe at the time yeah who wrote Fast Times well, and they're Fun considered a, what, a, hair, a hair band <laughs> 80s, 80s hair band by the- I would say back in the 70s they probably weren't but uh, by the mid 80s when everybody was yes. teasing out their hair you know yeah. with you know, all the Aquanet, Aquanet you could get a hold of they definitely followed yeah, that they, trend they went with yeah, the trend they did <laughs> And uh, I'm glad we stayed for the... Uh, the this As is evidenced the- by the picture on the cover <laughs> of my in 1987 tour guide. <laughs> All of them have huge hair. That's right. <laughs> um, so instead of going to the uh, the fireworks at midnight, we, we, we the, that was the last song they played was Crazy on You. And then well, actually, the all, last song they played was Old Lang Syne. Yeah, after midnight. <laughs> <At> midnight. <laughs> I'm guessing they probably played uh, Dreamboat Annie and Crazy on You and Magic Man. Did they play all those? Yeah, they played yeah. Magic Man. Uh, Dreamboat Annie, I don't think so, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, did they not play a little clip of that, no? Uh, I have the set list here. Um, they started with Baby Lestrange. That was a great opener. Sure. Never, Love Again, Roll the Dice, which is a new one. This is Now. Oh, which Love is, Alive. Oh, yeah, Love Alive. Yeah. This is Now, the uh, Ann Wilson and Trip Sitter. Mm-hmm. Magic Man, Little Queen, Straight On. Oh, another treat was Let's Dance, the David Bowie oh, cover. right, right. And then th- These Dreams. And then they had this drum moment. That was kind of cool. That was kind of trippy. That was interesting, yes. yeah. Yeah. Well, lights uh, dim for that one. Then Minstrel Win. Oh, Minstrel Win. Yep. And then Alone, What About Love, The Ocean, uh, Led Zeppelin cover, Bar- Barracuda, and then ending with Battle of Evermore going into Crazy on You to end the the year with, and then All Eyes. On 192 concerts I've been to last year. <laughs> <laughs> now I just need to prove to the Guinness Book of World Records that I did all this. <laughs> that they're big enough to qualify. Well, I got the evidence. <laughs> well, what's amazing is after uh, these three smash hits, uh, Dreamboat Annie maybe being the uh, the least successful of those three, uh, but it's still very much a beloved song in their catalog. They followed it up with... Uh, the final single from Dreamboat Annie, which was Love Me Like Music, I'll Be Your Song. And this one, not terribly popular in the charts anyway. These have been quiet days. When was the last time I wanted to sing? Last few dying days hanging on. What will they bring? And you and me, we keep coming apart And it's a wrong, wrong thing We gotta look right at each other and say Turn on the radio and play and fall in mm-hmm. love again. Some folk influence there with a little pedal steel For sure <laughs> So they might have thought, oh, no, our streak of success has come to an end here with our uh, debut album. But 
They needn't fear because when they released their second album, Little, Little Queen, Queen, the first single was a smash hit. <laughs> yes, indeed. Speaking at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100. And written by Ann Wilson, Roger Fisher, Nancy Wilson, and Michael DeRosier. Michael DeRozier, by far and away the better of the two drummers. And was this on Mushroom Records, or did they go to CBS by then? I, uh, you know, that's a good question. I believe the label was Portrait, actually. Yeah, I think this is even before Mushroom. Well, it, I think it would have had to have been after because Ann Wilson revealed in interviews that the song was about Hart's anger towards Mushroom oh, Records. my bad. Who, as a publicity stunt, released a made-up story of an incestuous affair involving Ann and her sister Nancy. Wow. Ooh, which, yeah, bad idea. <laughs> the song particularly focuses on Ann's rage toward a male radio promoter who came up to her after a concert asking how her lover was she initially thought she was talking about her boyfriend band manager michael fisher but after he revealed he was talking about her sister nancy (laughs) and became outraged went back to her hotel room and wrote the original lyrics of the song so something good came out of a pretty distasteful incident and uh portrait records is a subsidiary of cbs so they and they, they had a big court fight to get out of Mushroom Records, but eventually um, they, they got with the new contract. So. I could see why they would want to leave. <laughs> magic hands yeah and no doubt they played this right yeah oh yeah yeah you, you can't sure. <laughs> you can't do a hard show and not play yeah, yeah. barracuda barracuda no nope. i think people would be up in arms <laughs> so yeah, to speak yeah. and but, so they they followed it up uh barracuda their uh one of their biggest hits uh reaching number 11 in 1977 they followed it up with little queen which didn't do quite as well uh, that went to uh, number 62. They played this the other night. I don't think I've ever heard this song before. It's one of my more favorite songs by them. Yeah, I wasn't too familiar with uh, all their songs till I was doing some uh, research on this. So there's a lot of newer songs that came out with which were great too. They followed it up with Kick It Out, which went to number 79 in 77, but oh, love that ca- kind of d- diminishing returns in the charts. But then they must have been heartened, so to speak, when Crazy On You re-entered the chart and went to 62, uh, which is not huge, but considering it had already gone to number 35, uh, you know, three years before, that's pretty impressive. Sure. Or two years before. What, what's your favorite heart song? You'd say. Hmm, it's a good question. Might it might be "Kick It Out"? 
Well, maybe we should play a sample of that. Then. I think we need to, because I'm not sure that I even know it. The funny thing is, is it has a great ending, and the ending is also the same ending as is used in an ACDC song. And I keep thinking to myself, who borrowed the ending of which song from which other band? <laughs> is, there a, is there a kick but drum in this band? Or in this oh, song? This, this song's awesome. Yeah, let's see if we can hear uh, the ending. Where to you that ending was used at the end of an ACDC song. <laughs> it, it, to me, it sounds like a, a pretty standard kind of rock and roll vamp uh, sure. ending, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure a lot of bands uh, that's my conspiracy have theory, used anyway. it. Um, so who knows who influenced who there? But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, they, you know, they kept on making hits, but they weren't quite as big as uh, stuff like Magic Man and Barracuda, but you get together enough of these and you've got yourself a huge career and a huge audience. And so uh, when their uh, next record, their third album, Magazine, came out, their first single from it, Heartless, went to number 24. Very respectable. Yeah, I think this is the first time hearing this one for me. Uh, not bad, and I like the idea of uh, the band Heart doing Heartless. <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, the next single, Straight On. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's my favorite one. Yeah, actually, straight up hit. They released Without You and Magazine, the title track, uh, before that, um, which didn't chart. Uh, but Straight On was their next big hit from the following album, Dog and Butterfly. And it's interesting because it tells you that they didn't know which hits really were going to be big hits or not. That's right, yeah. And they were kind of fluctuating between the more folky numbers and the harder numbers. Yeah. Vocals with Ann and Nancy doing leading back. A solid beat. Yeah. yeah. What What's your favorite song of Heart, Harmonies. Erica? Uh, I think it's got to be Barracuda, I, <laughs> which we've played a little bit. That yeah. It's just that uh, chord progression at the beginning. Oh, yeah. You just can't argue with that. Once you hear that, you just want to crank it up. You it's know? a certified and, classic. Yeah. And the yeah. funny thing is, during our show the other night, um, they lit into that song with a guitar solo, a little short guitar solo. And when he finally resolved the solo sort of down, down to where they were just about to break out, mm-hmm. I thought to myself, this is the chord uh, in the key of Barracuda. And that's right when Nancy busted in with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those just classic chord progressions that oh, you yeah. just can't argue with. It's straight up classic. And, uh, and, you know, as we were saying how they were kind of fluctuating between the more folky numbers Mm -hmm. and the more rockin' numbers, well, straight on, a pretty rockin' number, 
and then followed it up with Dog and Butterfly, which oh. was the title track from this album, it's so Dog great. and Butterfly, which is a, a great song, but definitely more on the folky side Oh, of yeah, things. but this is one of their absolutely best hits. And they're still playing this. Yeah. I, I'd be very surprised if they didn't include this in the set list uh, on New Year's Eve when they, you guys They saw. didn't play it. They didn't? No, but, wow. Um, no, I thought they were maybe going to play it as well, but they didn't. But um, When you got that many songs, yeah. you're going to have to cut some. Wrestling with your desire Frozen strangers stealing your fires The message in my mind Only words that I could find See the dark and butterfly Up in the air And this was their last single of the 70s pretty mellow and what a great one it was yeah (laughs) and they started off the 80s uh with an album called bebe le strange or the strange baby uh which had a a song a minor hit even it up um and the title track bebe le strange only went to 109 so kind of limping into the 80s a little bit i think bebe le strange is about a cross dresser okay that's, that's how they started the show. Yeah, Bebe that's what they started the show. With. And it's a great. I, I love that tune as well. I think I think it's about like maybe a cross dresser that they knew. Do you, are you familiar with the song? I am not. Oh, we, we got to play it. Then. They make some mentions in up. the song in the lyrics. Another saw the song absent was they, they did not play "Stairway to Heaven." Yeah, they didn't end with "Stairway to Heaven." Um, yeah, but their cover of that, like at the Kennedy Center, that that's a. That's a, they do a great job on that. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, here's a little bit of a live version of Bebe Le Strange. Oh, this, this, there's a long intro that rolls through. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to we're gonna <laughs> jump ahead here. I don't know how to say you do better. I love you in the band. Never hit a rock like you could. How like you can. There's that line. Gets me thinking about Johnny Be Good, but you know you ain't no man. To me, this sounds like it's out of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yes. And maybe that's what they were referencing because sure. uh, I believe Rocky Horror Picture Show came out uh, maybe a year or so before. So Rocky that Horror tune. Picture Show, I believe, was released in 1975, if I'm not mistaken. I looked that really, up not really? too long ago. Yeah. So, yeah. Check me a if few, I'm wrong. A few years before. So it could have been referencing that. Um, that is a 75 flick. Yep. I thought it was more 80s, but yeah. Yeah, no, I I looked that up recently because I uh, had cause to. (laughs) (laughs) Did you have costume to is the question. (laughs) No, no. Our bathroom bathroom code at work is 1975 something. So I ended up, customers asked me why we had it that way. And I said, you know, because a lot of good movies came out that year. And then I had to look up and see which ones I was actually referring to. Well, what's Jaws is one. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Interesting to me is uh, on the back end of 1980, they released a greatest hits record. Pretty early in the career, I would think, to release greatest hits, but uh, they did this cover of Tell It Like It Is to yes. add some value and added some live recordings. Yeah. We've been going for about a decade by then, so. Almost. Yeah. They also covered Unchained Melody around this time. Yes. Oh, they did some great covers, yeah. By like the Righteous I, Brothers. Uh, I'm Down, Long, Long Tail Sally. And got some Beatles covers. And of course, Rock and Roll it ends that one, as I had said earlier. I 
And I was going to see Nancy Wilson's heart at the uh, at the fair with sticks, but uh, I didn't I didn't go that. I one. talked to a customer that saw that show and said it was, they said it was pretty good. But I, I'm glad that they they made a makeup show of uh, they they got back together a full <laughs> band and and we got to experience that event. That was yeah. Good Although kick off the several year. people did note that Anne and Nancy Wilson were not too chummy that night. Well, they were busy singing so. I'm sure, like with any other sibling relationships, there's peaks and valleys. Oh, yeah. Well, they have a specific valley to uh, highlight their <laughs> their history. Yeah. We won't go into that, though. Well, did did we get your uh, favorite song from Heart, Devin? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, Straight On. Straight On. Straight On. Right on. And uh, so, like, just looking at this uh, discography, you know, um, as they moved into the 80s, they followed up the greatest hits with Private Audition in 82. Mm, um, not so great. Yeah. This Man Is Mine went to 33, and How Can I Refuse on the following record. How Passion Can I Works, Refuse, yeah, was went, probably their biggest hit in that sort of low period. Yeah, so there, there must have been some pressure on them. Uh, Because it had been a little while since the the smash hit days of uh, songs like Barracuda and uh, Crazy on You. So um, when Heart uh, got around to making their self-titled album called Heart in 1985 and then scored these big 80s hits that we all know, like What About Love, Never, These Dreams... This was the most successful that they'd ever been, but I believe that the record company had been kind of getting on them uh, about not scoring hits and encouraging them, maybe demanding that they work with you know more slick producers yes, and absolutely. other songwriters to help juice the career at that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, they had worked with Jimmy Iovine for a while. Yeah, and they asked uh, them to use a different guy. I can't remember his name. I've got it here somewhere. Um, but he was the guy that came in, and and basically they wanted him to help produce some bigger hits. And sure enough, he he did the job. And this was around the time of the Bad Animals tour, like a uh, nineteen eighty seven, right or so? before that. Yep, nineteen eighty five. And then they came out with the the Power Battle, Battle Alone, which spent three weeks at number one. Right, but before that, it was What About Love. Which was the first single from the Hard album and went all the way to number 10. I've been lonely. I've been waiting for you. I'm pretending. And that's all I can do. The love I'm sending. So this originally by the Canadian rock band Toronto, uh, recorded in 1982, but didn't quite have the success of Hart's version, but they really created uh, a very strong power ballad. And this was the era of power ballads. Yeah, and the, uh, the producer's name that I was thinking of was Keith Olsen, very famous uh, 80s producer. And they combined power ballads with Alone going right into What About Love. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. Ron Nevison uh, produced this one. Oh, okay. And I mentioned some of that uh, record label pressure. Well, this was their first song for their new record label, which was Capitol Records. And Grace Slick and Mickey Thomas from Starship provide backing vocals on this. Who I have met both of them. Yep, I went backstage with Starship back in college. That was around Seattle? That was in the same time, the same year I saw this concert uh, in 1987 of Heart down in college. I also went to that show. Um, I was on the radio at KSMC and I got a backstage pass from my, um, my GM. 
and uh, went down and met Grace and Mickey Thomas and the rest of the band members at that time. Yeah, That's incredible. Yeah, pretty cool. And when uh, Johnny comes back on at some point, uh, maybe next week we'll got to ask him. He's got heart stories, I'm sure. I'm sure, sure yeah. He, he's seen pretty much everybody, so he must have seen heart over the years. Went to number four in 1985, and this song dominated the radio when it came out. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> hey, baby, I'm talking to you. Stop yourself and listen. It's like in the middle of high school for me. And it was written by Holly Knight, Gene Block, and Connie, which was a pseudonym for Ann Wilson, Nancy Wilson, and Sue Ennis. Oh. Which uh, I'm not sure why they didn't want to put their own names on this as uh, as far as songwriters go. Hmm, I mean, quite a change, quite a change from the early days when they would have been very proud uh, to put themselves as songwriters on a tune. That's funny. That's interesting. Yeah. Grateful Dead used to do that. They had a they had made up a name that they would use as an eponymous name for like all the band members if they wrote it all or a song. So the the girls might have had their Duran Duran posters up, but you had your heart posters up. Right? Oh yeah. Oh, I had some heart posters up in the day. Nancy Wilson was a hot day. That's why she was in that scene in Fast Times at Richmond High. <laughs> yeah, and the most successful of the string of hits, uh, These Dreams, number one in 1986, again. S- sung by Nancy rather than Ann. That's interesting, yeah. yeah. All over the radio, all over MTV at the time. Yeah. And remember when I mentioned Starship a couple minutes ago? Uh Well, of course, uh, Starship's smash hit at this time period was a little song called We Built This City Mm -hmm. on Rock and Roll, which was written by Bernie Toppin, uh, who's well known as being the lyricist with Elton John, Uh and Martin Page, uh, who wrote the music. Uh, So Bernie Toppin and Martin Page wrote that song. They also wrote these dreams yeah amazing yeah that was one of the things when we were talking about trying to get bigger hits and stuff they they one of the things that the producers kept telling him was that you might want to have some help from outside sources to write some songs or help you write some songs to try to generate some bigger hits and it worked it definitely did. Yeah. This song was originally offered to Steve, Stevie Nicks. Oh, yeah. Wow. It would have been interesting to hear Stevie's mm-hmm. uh, vocal on this, but yeah. she expressed no interest in recording it. But Hart had just recently signed Capitol Records, and while the band previously recorded their own material, yeah. they were impressed by these dreams and agreed to use the song on their upcoming album. And it paid off in that it became their biggest hit. Yeah. And now they're living, living the dream now. Big number one hit. You gotta love it. Well, uh, I don't know if we'll have time to play their whole discography, but uh, <laughs> no, of course not. Yeah, the too many. Too many uh, smash hits over the years uh, to get to it all. But uh, we should mention that they followed apart with Bad Animals, another uh, a multi or another platinum album, I should say. And uh, the first single from that alone went to number one as well. 
uh, when they played this live down at the Concord Pavilion in 87, the crowd was just like, love it, stunned. I hear the ticking of the clock, I'm lying. And this, of course, from the Bad Animals album. And, of course, they had their own studio here in Seattle called Bad Animals. That's right. That uh, ceased to exist, I think, in the early 2000s. But it yeah. uh, was a powerhouse, uh, you know, one of the best recording studios here in town mm-hmm. for a long time. It's probably an Amazon tower now. But... <laughs> probably. Right. And I got to admit, at this point, you know, when they were doing the straight-up AOR kind of middle of the road stuff i wasn't on board you know sure. this this uh took america by storm but for me i was like thought of heart as being kind of a bland overproduced super glossy group that didn't really you know float my boat it was only when someone pointed out yeah but they did barracuda that i you know hmm. thought okay yeah okay i have a little more respect for heart than i thought i did and Part of it being that they were two different, like completely different crews of the the band right. um, members. Sometimes they have several mandolins, and so yeah. it's like a whole quite the production. For this. Well, they've always, I think they've always had good production. And no shade on anybody that loves this song, because tons of people love it. It's still all over the radio. Yeah, I love this song. It just wasn't <laughs> my cup of tea. Yeah. That's totally cool. You more yeah, listened to Devo back then. I, yeah, I, well, <laughs> about 1987, I was probably listening to, uh, like, the Smiths. Uh, yeah. Probably the poppiest I got was that first Breakfast Club album. Uh, Boys to Men, maybe? Uh, no, nah, that wasn't really for me. But, <laughs> uh, but again, you know, it was paying off with record sales. As I said, Bed sure. Animals went platinum. Which, uh, at the time, would have been probably the biggest selling Seattle album of all time. Yeah. Probably makes sense. And in the 90s, they made an interactive CD-ROM, 20 years of rock and roll with five hours of audio footage. Nice. On the cutting edge. Um, one of their newer songs in 2016 I like is Two. Two. I don't know if you can find that, but uh, as I was browsing their catalog, uh, that one uh, has a good sound to it. <laughs> and I don't think it gets much airplay. Now, uh, is that two, like the number two, or two, uh, like, meaning also? The number two. T-W-O, okay. I believe. Yep. Is there the- All right. Yeah, I've got that. Let's close out the show with that today because... Uh, Unfortunately, we've got a, only a few more minutes here. So a- anything else you guys want to mention about uh, the career of Heart? Because, you know, there's no way we, <laughs> we could cover their whole extensive career. Because, again, they've been going 50 years and they've had so much success and so many ups and downs and so many uh, different members contributing to the band um, maybe any like uh, thoughts on your favorite uh, performance from the show? Well, um, I, I hope with this new Climate Pledge Arena show that they're able to maintain themselves together, and like they're going to open possibly for uh, Def Leppard. Leopard. Yeah, and, yeah. They're they're and, supposed to be doing some opening um, shows for Def Leppard and Journey this summer. Um, I. I don't know. I was just going to throw out a, a, a last funny thing is that at one point um, I owned a guitar that was owned by Nancy Wilson. That's and, pretty cool. And yeah, it was cool, except for the sad story was the fact that it was a guitar that had been stolen from her. Oh, no. And I didn't realize at the time. You who, didn't steal it, did you? I didn't steal okay. it. No way I would steal <laughs> Nancy Wilson's guitar. But I bought it from a guy who was kind of a shady guy. I'm not going to lie. And, uh. um, and I bought it and I knew that something was probably shady about it and it wasn't until I did some research and this is like pre-internet, pre, you know, (laughs) online, um, trying to do research about it. But I actually, um, I offered it back to her and it was a long process through telephone calls and there was no email, you know, nothing like that, just voicemails and things. But um, ultimately she said, thank you for offering it back to me for free, but I don't want it back. 
and so I interesting. Guess, yeah. she's, she's moved on. She's gotten more yep. guitars since. She so. moved on, and so yeah, she didn't. It was like sort of a bad memory thing. Hmm. But anyway, I have some pictures of me playing it, and then you can see her playing it in the Barracuda video. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's the one that she played in the Barracuda. And do video. you still have it? Nope, I oh. ended up selling it. Unfortunately, wow. yep. Because well, that's the way a, life goes. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but that's a great story. Don't yeah, you? yeah. Uh, probably one of my favorite parts of the show was uh, like the Battle of Evermore at the end. That was yeah, pretty special. Oh, yeah, great. They always do a great one with the mandolin and stuff in that one. Yeah. It was just surprising awesome. that I, we already got our dose of Led Zeppelin with Jason Bonham. And it's like, oh, and then they, they did the ocean. That and was the ocean, too. Was good, good Led Zeppelin cover they did. Yeah. Jason Bonham was a great opener, too. He, he actually, and uh, one funny thing, uh, when I was walking around the arena to get in line to go in, I actually caught a, a little 40-second snippet from outside the building of the sound check of Jason Bonham doing some of the Immigrant Song, which was the song he opened up his set with. And that's available on your YouTube channel. And that is available on my YouTube channel at Do Train. You've got a big YouTube channel. Devin Chrysler Studios getting bigger by the day. And we also have a Facebook group, the, the Viva ENT Rock Pop and Soul Facebook group. But so uh, you can connect with us and yep, yep. find out about the latest shows. Like maybe I'll, I'll I'll go there after uh, some after the show t- uh, today and uh, post some pictures uh, like the guitar. And um, some other pictures of like the uh, tour guide that I have and stuff. Artifacts. Yeah. 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 Um, And yeah, tonight we're going to the high dive to see uh, Signal Flags. And tomorrow night, going back to the high dive to see Marmalade. And then uh, the next night is uh, at the um, Blue Moon Tavern. Uh, There's uh, some great bands playing there. Uh, you have a show coming up in a couple weeks. I yeah. do, yeah, yeah. Uh, January nineteenth at the New Frontier in Tacoma, Washington. Yep. Yeah, we're playing with the Selfish Lovers, uh, our friends Bandolier, and uh, a guy called Beast Lightning. So it should nice. be a lot of fun. Yep. Well, Great. I will be there. Oh, fantastic! Looking that's, forward to that's seeing the you plan. Guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah January is right. off to a great start. So. <laughs> Everyone keep on jamming. That's right. Absolutely. Keep the music alive. Well, we're going to leave you with Heart Doing Two, a more recent song from them, showing they're still going strong. Thanks for listening to Viva, Even, Viva ENT Rock, Pop, and Soul. Happy New Year, everybody. Have a great day. Right? Thanks for coming on, Jerry. Thanks. Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks for having me on, guys. Happy New Year. About us when we walk away. Yeah, they don't live in our space. We're five million light years away, alone, alone in our own world. Home is what you are to me, love. me